If you follow me on Instagram and Twitter, you'll probably already know that recently I traveled 3,000 miles round trip with my family to visit Texas. But why did I go there? And did I happen to check out any record shops on my journey? Well, in this video, I'm gonna tell you guys everything. Hey friends, welcome to Vinylize. I'm Jarrett New, and today I'm gonna to share with you all the cool stuff I experienced during my road trip from LA to Texas and all the way back. And we'll explore a cool little record shop nestled in the heart of South Texas. Also, I picked up a ton of great new movies, music, and even a special music player that I want to introduce to you guys for the first time on this channel. So stick around to the end of the video and you'll see what that is. Now, first of all, you may be wondering, why would I drive 3,000 miles for a record shop? Well, actually, the record shop wasn't the only reason for my visit. The main reason for this journey was for myself and my family to visit our relatives back home in Texas. We hadn't seen them in like forever and I did have a few new cousins that I wanted to meet. Also, I'm from Texas, by the way. I don't think I ever mentioned that before, so now you know. And being that we were headed that way anyways, I decided I would use the opportunity to check out a record shop in South Texas. Also, you're probably thinking, Jarrett, why didn't you just fly? Well, honestly, with all of the crap that's been going on lately at airports, I feel a hell of a lot safer driving anywhere in the US. Plus, traveling with vinyl records in a plane is kind of hard to do. But the downside of driving is that it does take freaking forever to get a across the country. Okay, now here's what's up. Option one, driving from LA to Texas can be done comfortably in about three days. Option two, now if you don't care about sleep or eating a good breakfast or dinner, you could make it uncomfortably in about two days. And finally, option three, if you're completely insane, you could make it in one day, provided you sleep and drive in shifts with at least one other person. Now, my family and I are not insane, so we chose option one, which meant six long days on the road. Most of my time was spent in the back seat avoiding the sun and on my iPhone playing Tetris. Poorly. And since I couldn't bring this turntable with me, I listened to music on my new Pandora One subscription, which has a higher quality audio feature that I took full advantage of. And the main stations I'd listened to were Indian Vibes, Grover Washington Jr., and Robert Rich Radio. Now, as I was back there chilling to good music, I noticed three major things. First, once you get out of LA, there's a hell of a lot less traffic and the roads really open up, which is awesome. It's nice to actually see real scenery for a change and not just buildings everywhere littering the landscape. So that was nice. Second, as we traveled through the Midwest, I also noticed that there were a lot more trucks driving around. You don't really see as many trucks in LA because parking anywhere in this city is a nightmare. So small compact cars usually work best. And finally, the last thing I noticed was the heat. After you leave Los Angeles, you quickly realize it is hot as hell everywhere else, especially in the summer. In fact, during our trip, the South was engulfed in a massive heat wave. Every morning, we had to fill our cooler with ice and bottled water just so we wouldn't die out there. It got so bad, in fact, that during the ride back to LA, just to amuse myself, I started recording the temperatures outside of our car. Now, where do you think was the hottest place we encountered? Here's what I found. Starting us off at 108 degrees Fahrenheit, we have Fort Stockton, West Texas. Next up, 110 in Tucson, Arizona, 112 in Phoenix, 113 in La Paz County, Arizona, that's on the border between Arizona and California, 116 in Blythe, California, 118 in Indio, that's near Coachella, and finally we passed through the surface of the sun, a blistering 119 degrees Fahrenheit in Thousand Palms, California. I had to sleep on this bed of ice just to survive. Now, just for fun, here's us passing the Texas sign, the New Mexico sign, and unfortunately I didn't get Arizona, so here's a picture I googled. Now, real quick, here's a few other noteworthy things I saw during this trip. Green trees in Arizona, we don't have these in LA, an abandoned gas station in West Texas, this snack I had never heard of from New Mexico, this peg game from Cracker Barrel, which I was completely obsessed with. If you've been to a Cracker Barrel lately, you know what I'm talking about. Whataburger, because as we all know, if you're in the South, it is a requirement. And finally, Best Western. Now, why is Best Western on this list? Two words. LED shower head. This has to be one of the freaking coolest things I saw on this trip because I love LEDs, but putting them inside a shower head is absolutely bonkers. Also, I didn't get electrocuted. 
which was good. Now, let's finally talk about the record shop I visited. Actually, it was a half price books in Corpus Christi, Texas. But this half price bookstore was unique because in addition to it having loads of books, it also had a specialty coffee shop and a very healthy media and music selection. It featured tons of vinyl records, cassettes, CDs, DVDs, VHS tapes, comics, and even laser discs. And because this shop had so much media packed into a small space, it kind of reminded me of like a mini Amoeba Records or a Burger Records type of venue. It was really neat. They also had a very nice selection of blues and jazz music on vinyl, which were priced very reasonably. So that was kick ass as well. Now, while I was there, I also had a lot of fun flipping through all of their laser discs, and some of them I would have loved to pick up. However, there's one major problem. I don't own a laser disc player. So that's kind of a drag. But if I did have one, I would have loved to pick up Jackie Chan's Police Story, which they had available. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I feel like that movie's kind of rare on the Laserdisc format. And the copy I came across was in mint condition. It's a real shame I don't have a player because I would have loved to pick that one up. But being that I do still have a VCR, I spent the majority of my time looking through their VHS selection. And they had a ton of great movies that I had never seen before, all for just 50 cents each. Because as we all know, in 2016, they're practically giving away VHS. VHS tapes. And finally, before we left the store, my friend Ruben and I spotted a Steve Irwin action figure. Yes, you heard that right. A Steve Irwin action figure. So here's some footage of that. As you can hear, at the end of that video, we started laughing a little bit. So basically, we're going to hell. All right, now let me show you all the cool stuff I picked up for myself at Half Price Books. First off, because I'm very picky, the only record I picked up was the Jackson 5 Looking Through the Windows. I have the Jackson 5's ABC on vinyl, so I figured I should pick this one up also. And I'm glad I did. Now here are all the VHS tapes I picked up. Rumble in the Bronx, Marked for Death, Aaron Brockovich, Cop and a Half, which I remember from my childhood, MST3K, The Unearthly, The Governator, Predator, The Sixth Day, and Total Recall, one of the best 90s action movies ever made. Okay, now here's all the cool stuff my friend Ruben gave me. The Monkees on Vinyl, The Best of Uriah Heep, The Graduate Soundtrack, Primus, Pork Soda, A Box Set of Frankie Lyman, The Teenagers, A Box Set of Dave Brubeck, Early Fantasies, and and finally, this really cool storybook vinyl of Charlie Brown's All-Stars. Super cool. He also included two CDs, B.B. King and Julie London, and a ton of cassettes, including Throwing Copper Live, Mr. Mr. Welcome to the Real World, Neil Diamond, the Christmas album, just as a joke, I guess, The Best of the Moody Blues, The Best of Manhattan Transfer, Diana Ross, Baby It's Me, Elvis Presley, Blue Hawaii, The Carpenters, Horizon, actually I already have this one on vinyl and it's great. Rush, Moving Pictures, James Bond, 13 original themes, and finally the best of the monkeys. Now he also gave me the following VHS tapes. Inner Space, Greedy, The Paper, and the X-Files episodes Conduit and Ice, which came with two special collector's cards, which was super cool. Now to transport all this awesome stuff back to LA, Ruben also gave me this really awesome record case. This thing definitely helped me keep all all the records and tapes out of that insane heat that I was talking about earlier, which was fantastic. Now, at the beginning of this video, I mentioned a special music player, and here it is. Ruben gave me this really sweet TIAC A2050 reel to reel player. Now, this is my very first reel to reel player, so I'm super excited to learn a lot more about them. A lot of you guys have been telling me lately that I need to check out reel to reel players, so now, I finally have one. And as I learn more about them, I'll be sure to share what I've learned with you guys on this channel. But we do have a slight problem. It doesn't work. There's a lot of scraping and grinding noises that scare me when I turn it on, so it's not in tip-top shape. But thankfully, there's an awesome shop in the valley called ARC TV Repair. And there's a really cool guy named Bill Choppa who owns the place, and he can repair everything from turntables, cassette decks, reel-to-reel -reel players, eight-track players, DVD players, amplifiers, TVs, and even curling irons and toasters. So when it comes to repairing anything audio or TV related, I feel like ARC TV is gonna be the best way to go, but I'll show you guys that process in another video. So overall, my trip to Texas was a lot of fun, and you know, I hung out with some really cool people and came back with a lot of great gifts. Now, 
Have you guys done any traveling lately? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this really long video and I haven't bored you yet, then join the vinyl revolution and hit subscribe because I'm gonna be coming out with a lot of great videos every week that you guys are not gonna wanna miss. Be sure to find me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and more. All of my social media links are down below. And most importantly, friends, keep spinning that vinyl. 119 degrees Fahrenheit. That's insane.